Cotopaxi is very special to me. I've heard a lot of times that I can do this and that I don't have what it takes because of my disability. So, well, my story is a bit long. When I was a child, I had a lot of issues with both of my feet. I started breaking my ankles all the time. After a while, I found a doctor that offered to do an experimental surgery. I signed a waiver. This could go very wrong and I could either lose both my legs or never walk again. But between the possibility of something bad going on and something good going on, I chose the good. I think that health systems in places like Ecuador and in a lot of the world are stretched thin. They're not quite working right. And in spite of everyone's best efforts, there's a person in the middle that's feeling that something's still not quite right. So I had that surgery and it worked for like five years. I started playing on the soccer league of my school, so it was great. And then I was running one day and I tripped and the material inside exploded. So that was the beginning of everything. They did like maybe 12 surgeries. Every surgery got bigger, tougher, and the healing process went slower. My mom told me like, this is not life. Your, your pain is so high that your body just shuts down. Like you're not even awake. And that's when I started feeling like I don't want this leg anymore. When I was pushing for the amputation, no one really supported it. My family, my friends freaked out completely. Disability is a bad word here. We have so many cultural beliefs and stigmas against disability. Like we paint it as a loss, we paint it as pity story because the disability narrative in so many societies is bad, but the amputation and the disability is not something disempowering. In fact, it's empowering. It's more empowering in a way because you learn to navigate things differently. You learn to be creative and you learn to just constantly find solutions where there's many times not solutions offered. So we decided to do the last resource surgery where they put a internal prosthesis and they change all your bones into metal. I asked to be awake in that surgery. And I remember the doctor, he was placing the device and he went silent completely. And he just said, everyone stop. At that moment, I saw the bad news in his eyes. Within weeks, Something inside of me knew that it failed. I called my doctor and I told him like, please, could you amputate my leg? He was like, no, your leg is viable. You're not losing a good limb. And I was like, this is not a good limb. <laughs> this is barely a limb. And he just got very angry at me and just told me, we're not talking about this anymore. That's it. So I was like, oh, great. Then I'll find someone that will do it. I don't need you. You're not God. You can tell, like, she's strong. She's fierce. She would put up a fight for herself and for people that she cares about. She knew she wanted her life back, and she saw that this was her best opportunity, and she had to fight against everybody. Like, I can't imagine feeling like you're going against the current and disappointing people and hurting people, because I'm sure people hurt from that decision. But I think at the same time, like, what ROMP stands for is this fight for autonomy over our own bodies, and that should be a basic human right. So I went home and wait for it to go really wrong. So they won't have any other choice to amputate. Within a few days, I was sitting on a chair and just a bit of weight on that ankle. and. I heard it broke. 
I, I could feel it. I felt a terrible amount of pain and my leg went numb and it was twisted to the side. It was really bad. So I called my doctor. He was like, okay, I'll fix it. I'll take everything out and we'll go from there. It's not completely dead. I told him, that's not what I want. I really want my life back. Why can you see the bigger picture? Why can you imagine me running? Why can you imagine me coming down from the mountain? He didn't want to do it. So I went home and I waited a few days and the leg went black. I call him again, you're gonna do the amputation or I'm gonna find someone else. I think he was very disappointed at me, but I really didn't care at the time. The recovery process wasn't great. It took me to all the amputations to be fine, but it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. I wouldn't change a single thing, not a single thing. My story is very much centered around what we do now, which is mobility done in a caring and loving way because that's what I received. I was born with a birth defect. And of course, my parents were freaking out. They're both nurses. My dad was able to ask a surgeon. He just showed him the x-rays of my leg without saying, this is my son. The surgeon takes a glance at it and he's like, oh, just cut that foot off. Like, just get rid of it, you know, go to prosthetics. My dad says he just started crying. And then of course the doctor knew like, he's, wait, is this your kid <laughs> you know, that I'm looking at? I'm uh, sorry I was so blunt about it, but that's what you should do. I'm very grateful that my parents made that decision, to be honest. I had access to a great hospital system whose philosophy was we're going to take care of children with orthopedic needs and we're going to do it well. And I believe in passing that forward. Why not create that luck for others like Sarah? And she does the same thing, right? I mean, she's paying it forward. She's passing it along. She's not letting it just get stuck with her. She's doing what she can to make sure that her Ecuadorian brothers and sisters can get the same thing. And she's not the only one, and she certainly won't be the last. As we move along with ROMP as an organization, you know, we plant these seeds in places, those seeds grow, they become communities, and those communities take the ROMP mission forward and sustain it and grow it and scale it. I always tell them that one of the reasons I'm so grateful with him it's because he has never limited me. I found that people with no disabilities limit me more than the ones that I encounter in this community. And I have an unmeasurable amount of gratefulness to him because he set me free. And even when a lot of the decisions and the crazy amount of shit I've tried over these years have been very risky. He never says no to me. And he says, I'll support you, okay. Do you wanna climb it? We'll do it. I think I mean a decent amount <laughs> to Sarah. She means a lot to me. I really care for her as a person. It's a really nice friendship and I'm honored to be a care provider for her. And I'm just glad that she was able to step up internally and continue to look for what she felt was ultimately the right solution. I feel like Sarah's like the sister that I never had. I've been an amputee for 23 years and she's been an amputee for two years and she just is handling it like such a champ. My mom says that I was always like this. She uses the word in Spanish is Voluntariosa, it's very strong-willed. I was built this way. This is what you get, crazy and wild, and that's it. My physical therapist has told me this could happen in the same way than the other leg, and you need to be really aware of that because at some point the damage will progress. But I'd rather keep living and enjoying nature, mountains, and my life, and pushing boundaries. And if it happens, I will find a way around it, and I will learn to use another prosthetic leg if I have to. I don't 
healthcare. I know it's possible. I hope there will be more women that will follow the steps I'm trying to take, that there will be a lot of girls that won't question their ability and that they listen to the voices of possibility. If I could tell those girls and women something, it would be fight back as hard as you can because you never know what comes after trying and after failing and after getting back on your feet and try it again. That's why I'm doing this.